Hello everyone, my guest today is Russ Perry. He is building a company called Design Pickle, which is a platform that allows you to grab flat rate creative services. He's the uh, he's the, the world's most successful flat rate, flat rate creative service. He leads a global team as they rethink and deliver a remarkable new way to find the perfect creative. All right, Russ, you ready to take us to the top? Let's do it. All right. So this is a, obviously a competitive space. You know, I've used tools, obviously, like Fiverr and Upwork and things like this before, you know, dribbles maybe on the other end. Where do you put yourself on the spectrum of these content services, creative services? We're what you do when you graduate from those marketplaces. Uh, we find that our services is like the perfect blend between the benefits of an employee, but without the risk or the cost of, of that. And you can dial it up, dial it back, add it to subtract it, really dynamic with the needs that you have. Mm -hmm. When did you come up with the idea? What year? 2015, after I unsuccessfully tried to run a creative agency for eight years and was an unemployed consultant trying to get like help and I couldn't find it on the marketplaces. And I was like, damn it, there has to be a better way to find reliable help. And then you know how the rest of that story goes. Why was the agency unsuccessful? We never specialized. We were a generalist agency trying to do too many things to everyone. We couldn't develop a process. We couldn't develop a system. And that was my aha moment afterwards. It was like, look, I could just do really, I, you know, I'll even say it, kind of boring design, production design, straight level stuff. And if I could get it really dial in and optimized, I think I could have a, a different kind of business than trying to do, you know, everything under the sun. So that agency, just out of curiosity, I mean, what did you, it's best to you or how much revenue did it do? We did around $3 million in our best year, but we were doing high-ticket items. I'm talking half-million-dollar branding projects, quarter-million-dollar trade show events. So one-and-done huge monster projects. I never had more than eight clients at a time, and it was unscalable, and there was no sales system. I, I made about every mistake in the book possible with that agency, which I actually think is like... 85% of why Design Vehicle has done well is because I got all my mistakes out of the way. Okay, so best year, three million. There are never more than eight clients. And what was the team size there about? We had a team size of about six people here in Scottsdale. And then this is when I, um, you know, kind of fortuitously tested the outsourced model. I had a partner in Buenos Aires in Argentina, and we had 12 designers and creatives down there. And the whole model was to try to use international teams to have a lower cost of goods. It worked on that part. But what I misestimated was just not having a system for the projects. And so we spent so much time redoing work, managing clients. We lost all our profits in the client management side of it. Interesting. Well, by the way, six employees and a $3 million in your best year. I mean, half a million per employee is not that bad. Plus plus the 13 in Argentina. So oh, got they, it. I, I, he was a 50, 50 partner. So I'll, half my money had to go there. So. I see. Okay. <laughs> All right. So 2015, you jump into design pickle. So, so walk me through your mind. Is this typical marketplace model? Where do you make money? So it's not actually, we're the only service out there. All of our team is full-time dedicated to us. And this was a decision that I had from the very beginning is I just knew how hard it is to always having to like find someone, build that relationship, explain what you need, explain your brand. And from day one, our creatives have just worked for us. So that was started with one creative, one project manager and myself, three people launching in January 2015. I never wanted to actually be in between the client and the creative. So our clients just worked directly with the creatives. And it was a super bootleg hacked together system. Uh, the running joke is actually if you knew what email address we used, you didn't even need a paid account because you could just circumvent the whole paying us thing. Uh, and we just launched from there and just really looked at what is the average utilization that I could think of of a client and what they would need on a week to week basis. And and I was listening to a ton of startup podcasts at the time. I was like, shit, I just want recurring revenue. What's a price I could pick? And I just picked that and went to went to market. So how many designers now are full time? Around uh, 470. Okay, 470 full-time. I mean, back in the napkin, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this guy's headcount expenses per month are through the roof. It is, but when you think about that, most of our of that is uh, our labor in other markets. Uh, this is where our cost of goods really comes into play because our gross margin is on a good month, uh, you know, 68% on a, on, a, on, a, on a, when we start to grow and we're adding man middle management, it gets down to low 60s. But we're, our teams are in markets, I call them emerging markets, where 
they are, you know, on average making three to four dollars an hour if they want to get a job where we'll start at six to seven dollars an hour. So we're three Xing their take home, still fractional of what you could hire here and tons of automation and systemization that we've built on the software side to streamline everything. Of the 470 full-time designers, how many are not in the United States? 470. Oh God, so they're all they all in yeah. Argentina? No, they're in the Philippines, Mexico, Indonesia, uh, Argentina, Colombia, uh, moving into Peru, India, a uh, couple of countries that are escaping me. So our, our goal is to be the best employer in every one of those markets. You can't make a living working on a marketplace. Like you can't make a living cobbling together jobs off Fiverr or 99designs. And that's where a lot of those companies get their teams from, their labor. Uh, we give them full-time rates, weekly contracts, benefits, all of that. So we can recruit from the best of the best. And we're also having a nice labor arbitrage as well, um, providing really good talent from countries that have a much lower cost of living. Is that the is that the growth play? Go on Fiverr and Upwork, sort by designers with most reviews to least, then go pick the top ones off and say, hey, instead of hunting every month, we'll give you guaranteed six bucks an hour. So that was our play the first 18 <laughs> months, and then we ran out of people. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, not, so, not a bad way to get started. No, yeah, well, Upwork, we were just hunting on Upwork all the time. Yeah. And, you know, we just ran out of talent. Now it's all, uh, we have an entire dedicated recruiting team. So of the 470, not all are designers. They all at one point were, but we have HR training, recruiting, um, all of the functional side of that is included in those numbers as well. Interesting. Okay, so let's fast forward uh, to today. How many customers are you serving? Actively, we have 3,300 subscriptions. So that could a customer could have multiple subscriptions depending on how much of our service they want. How many unique customers? I would say on that, uh, a little shy of 3,000. And can you explain to me why one customer, like one person might have two plans? It's unique economics on how much volume you get in a, in a day. So each subscription you have guarantees you a certain amount of creative output. And if you just want more done per day, you can pay more and sort of buy up more of their time. Also, we do more than graphic design. We do right now graphic design and illustrations. Later this year, we're doing motion graphics. Next year, copywriting, video editing. So we're so eventually you could build your own virtualized team with multiple subscriptions across each service. Yeah, I mean, I wonder what a platform like what you are building is your is the moat that you're building, as Buffett would say, your ability to recruit globally, right? And get people in a system that can deliver that talent also globally. And then there's a spread between what an American company would pay for a great design from someone in Argentina, or is your competency a design competency? I think it might be a recruiting competency. It's not the design competency. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not winning any off, you know, Madison Avenue awards here. Yeah. What we are is we've built a system that optimizes creativity, really. And, you know, anyone, I joke, anyone can go out and make a couple hundred thousand dollars a year copying what we do. But there's like legitimate and really complicated, scalable, like challenges that you have to have. Like we'll do you know, 12,000 requests this week, individual unique requests. We're serving, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of emails and messages and all of that and managing it. We have AI, we have all this tech. That's the moat. It's managing that, not just finding some an, uh, cheaper designers compared to US and reselling their time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so of the 12,000 requests you get per week, first off, explain what that is. So I'm on the homepage right now. As a request, when somebody clicks one of these green buttons on one of your plans, $399, $995, or $499 a month? No, that's just your subscription to the all-you-can-eat buffet of Design Pickle. So we're flat rate. Whatever you pay per month is what you pay no matter how much you request. So our Oh, I see. Our entry plan is uh, 400 bucks a month. We have a pro real-time plan, which plugs a designer into your Slack. So you can actually have a nine to five designer in your Slack into your own channel for $1,000 a month. And, um, and that's the flat rate. So it's all about the utilization there. So a request is just anytime you log into the app and you need something. So what, I mean, obviously people can pick one of these plans. What would you say the average price point is that a customer is paying per month? I mean, our, our ARPU is, is like $512. Okay, so got it. Good split. Yeah. And if you just count by popularity, it's just sort of an average. Is your 995 the most popular or the 399 per month most popular? 
So by volume, it's all it's the entry plan yeah. because it's been around longer. But I, I I laugh the day we launched the thousand dollar plan. It's easier to sell. The clients stick around longer. Our cost of our cost is negligible. It's it was like the running joke. Like why didn't we do this sooner? <laughs> this Interesting. A, Interesting. Yeah, and so the upsells there are real time collaboration, same day delivery, API integration, and a couple others. Which one of these upsells that are not available in the four hundred dollar month plan were the most powerful in terms of converting people from four hundred to a thousand bucks a month? So I wouldn't actually say it's an upsell or a conversion. They're two different audiences. But the what people value the most, the value metric that's the most powerful is I can talk to my designer real time. Got it. The collaboration. Here's a drop it in a file in Slack. What do you think about this? Check, take a look at this. And their little green dot turns on at 9 a.m. and it turns off at 5 p.m. And they're there. They're available. It's pretty, it's pretty cool on that front. Interesting. Okay. Talk to me about revenue growth. So first yeah. year, do you remember how much you did? We did 300,000 our first year. Okay. Uh, you want me to just go through all the years? Yeah, why not? <laughs> 300,000, uh, 1.2, 3.4, 4.2, 10. Okay. Interesting. So you did 10 last year. Yeah. What do you think you'll do this year with the, with the prices and everything? Uh, we rounded down conservatively. We'll be doing 14 million. Interesting. And all of that, like when you look at your hiring plans, you have to have some sense of what of that is fixed, true SaaS sticky revenue versus what is kind of one-time kind of work. So break down the 10 million from 2019. How much would you put into that into predictable recurring SaaS revenue that you can make hiring decisions around? Um, it depends on the time horizon. So of of the first year, uh, year zero through or month zero through 12, it's going to be around 50%. And I'm going to explain something on the back end because these numbers might seem a little scary to an average SaaS business. Okay. Um, lifetime signups, it's 25%. Like if we've, we we will retain 25% of our signups for life. But we really focus our sales, sales strategy on uh, multi-month and annual plans. So we will, um, you know, our numbers, we, we might have a client that you know, would normally only stick around for three, four, five months, but we really aggressively look to sell them on a full, uh, a discounted 12 month plan, their first 90 days to capture that full revenue. And that's just learning about the utilization of design. It's not a sticky service like an accounting tool or some other thing. So we have to have a much different approach on how we capture that revenue from a client. Cause we know at some point they might just change their mind and not want to use us anymore. And there's really not, we have like a whole categorization of happy churn. I love you. You guys are amazing. My project's done. Yeah. Yeah. And there's nothing to, that you see this in the event business as well. You know, these sassy is calling the show and they go, Nathan, I hate how high our churn is. I'm going, well, if you do your job and do a great event, they're going to stop it. And they're going to come back next year when they do the event. Like yeah. you can call it whatever you want to do. We have to understand how people are using the tool. So this makes sense. I want to dig into the, the annual sales. So first off, break your team down for me. So what's the total team size today? Total team size is like 505 folks. Okay, including the 470 outsourced yeah. kind of so designers, even, managers. We categorize it as HQ because we do have a few people outside the US on that side, sales, marketing, engineering, customer support, and then production. So HQ plus production is about 505. So 35 is mm -hmm. HQ. Yep. How many are engineers? We have five engineers now. And how many are quota carrying sales reps? Zero. <laughs> so how do you motivate your sales reps to get the customer to go to annual in the first 90 days? We incentivize, um, so quota carrying is, you know, they, they have a, a, a bonus past their salary. Uh, they get incentivized on the percentage of the first deal a customer has with us. So if that, cust if that inbound lead only signs up for a monthly, they're only going to get a percentage of that monthly uh, contract. But if they're able to sell them into a three, six, or 12-month plan out of the gates, then they'll have a much larger, uh, I guess, numerator for the, for the uh, bonus on the sales side. Thing. Okay. And then talk to me about how you've capitalized the business. Bootstrapped or have you raised? We are bootstrapped. And then about two years ago, we did a debt lending uh, and just use, use some, um, borrowed some money. And that has been the best for us because we cash flow really well. Um, our LTV is, you know, well over $4,000 and our, our CAC is anywhere from six to 700 
corporate dollars. So we can return on a client in two to three months as long as we have the cash available. Yeah. How much did you raise on the debt side? 1.2 million. And which from SAS Capital, Lighter Capital? Lighter, sp- lighter. The guy's a lighter. Light, interesting. Was, I love it. I mean, I always joke it's like the sketchy college credit card you get, you know, high interest and it's super easy to get. But they were easy. I mean, they understand it. It was it was a great decision for my business because of my numbers. But if I was selling a $25, $30 product without a re- big return immediately, I don't know if that would have been the route. What year was that that you did that with Lighter? Um, uh, in 2018. Yeah, so people that, sat, founders that have come in that looked at Lighter and ultimately passed, you'll commonly hear, Nathan, it was too hard to figure out what the interest rate was. It was four to 8% of our gross monthly receipts plus a 1.2 to 1.8 X repayment cap over like a targeted three to four years. But if we grow fast, then we pay it back faster and then the cost of capital goes through yeah. the roof. <laughs> yeah, so we actually, I don't know how many people have gotten this. We just got a term loan with them. Got it. Got it. So I think it's a new, a newer product and they saw our numbers and they, it was so just three, three, you know, 36 payments. We know what it is. We can budget for it. Easy peasy. Can you, are you comfortable sharing a range of what that rate is? Usually these you see between like 14 and 25%. Um, you can probably do the math quicker. I just know our payments like around 60 K a month. So okay. I don't know. I don't know what the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so 6K a month, three-year term, we can come back to that later, but interesting. So this is, by the way, a trend. I think you're gonna see a lot more companies using debt, um, yeah. especially healthy ones like this, because you can essentially then own, you and your partner keep 100% control of the company. Right, exactly. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, cool. So you're expanding into additional spaces. Um, would you ever look at M&A right now? Are there any companies you'd go buy? So this is, a, I tease it, not, not anyone that's like us, but I actually have this, sort of weird um, fantasy, I don't know if that's like a right word, (laughs) of like finding burnt out agency owners and gobbling up their account managers and uh, putting them just all on our customer success team. So, and then, you know, buying books of business that we could resell our services directly into to recoup on the M&A transaction. Um, But, you know, haven't been too aggressive about that. Was talking to one company uh, uh, out of South Dakota of all places, and before COVID hit, and just put it put the ice on that. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, you know, there's a lot of these like Chrome extensions that are like color palette Chrome extensions, or like you know, small small marketplaces that just fizzled out because they couldn't get the chicken and egg problem done. But like, I mean, like this is a the way I currently do this is I will come up with one design like a podcast logo, and I will just pay. I'll give it to six people on Fiverr. And then they'll, and they're all cheap and they'll, I'll get six yeah. options back and I'll pick one. I, you know, I used to use 99 designs, but like the quality was just like all over the place. It was very hard to get yeah. anything predictable. Yeah. Well, you know, we, when you're ready to not have to even mess with that anymore, we'll be here for you. I think with Fiverr, they actually tried to buy us twice last year uh-huh. uh, and they, there were on premium, but what comes down to is like when you, when you need one every week or one every day and you just want to send the info to someone and not have them give them a brief, not have it to go through the commerce checkout process or sync it to your Asana, you just put the details in there and it zaps right over to Design Pickle. Interesting. Okay, here, before we wrap up, so you said you got 1.2 from Lighter on a three-year term, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, something's wrong. I mean, unless it really is as high. So if you're paying like 60 grand a month, that basically means uh, that you're paying like a 40% interest rate. If you're it's 60 grand a month for three years, it can't be that high. It's not that high. I know that. So I must, I must have gotten something off in that. And, okay. uh, and <laughs> I'm the creative guy, remember? Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My, I mean, I have a thesis that a lot of these lenders right now are lending based off the spread they have to make to cover their expenses, not based off the true risk of the SaaS company defaulting. So I look uh-huh. at what you've built on the surface, and it seems like a stable, predictable thing. I just think over time, the cost of capital for folks like you are going to come come way down into the 11, 12, 13, 14% range. Yeah, I know I know it's not the cheapest out there. It was just the easiest for us at the time because we are not a pure SaaS business. We're, you know, we're a, a tech-enabled service. So it was harder for us to try to find other lending um, that would have been, you know, at when we were smaller. Yeah. What did uh what did Fiverr offer you? The first round was two or three million. The second round was 20 million. And then I said no to both. The, f- the second round was what year? Last year? Last year, yeah. Interesting. And why'd you say no to 20 Off million? Off the record. There weren't, there weren't any term sheets. These were casual conversations. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Technically, well, they didn't offer us anything for the record. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course, of course. Uh, but general chat. And and why why no to 20 million? You own 100% with your partner? You um, know? 
I loved actually the Fiverr team. You know, don't get me wrong. I think they're badass. Uh, I think they have a lot going through them. They were early adopter. It was a lot in what the deal was going to be, public stock, earnout, performance. Um, so it was just complicated. Yep. And I don't think it was the right fit. I don't think we're going to say no. I'm still friends with them. I think I knew there was a number for me to make it work and we just weren't there. But um, I think just the timing was off. Yeah. All right. Let's wrap up with the famous five. Number one, favorite book? Edner's Game by Orson Scott Card. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Oh, I love Cal Newport. I don't know if you can call him a CEO. He's an author, but he does do a little coaching and speaking. So <laughs> yeah, I'd count him. Number three. All right. What's your favorite online tool for building the company? Right now, it would have to be profit well. Like I couldn't live without it. Yep. Number four. How many hours of sleep are you getting every night? Seven to eight. Situation, married, single kiddos? Married with three daughters, 14, eight, and four. Wow. Okay. And how old are you? I'm 37. Last question. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? Uh, stop drinking immediately. It's not helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, there you have a design pickle. He built his own agency up to about $3 million. Now has over 3,000 customers, closer to a SaaS model, 68% gross margins. They pay for designers' time. They built a team of 470 offshore designers that are very talented, making six, seven bucks an hour. Those customers pay between 500 and 600 bucks per month on average. They're doing, they will do about 14 million this year, did 10 million uh, last year in 2019, processing over 12,000 design requests per day as they look to scale. Own 100% of the company. They bootstrapped, raised $1.2 million in debt a couple of years ago building the company the right way. Russ, thanks for taking us to the top. Hey, thank you so much.